to SGU Uncut, and thank you for joining us for our new series, Anchored in the Trinity. My name is Leah, and I will be your host for this series, and today I am joined by Mark. Mark, go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody here at SGU. I am Mark Loera. I just joined staff as the Associate Director of Small Groups here at Nativity. There you go. Thank Amazing you. Stuff, yeah. Thanks for coming to join us today. For <laughs> thank you for first, having me. Our I'm first so episode. Glad. Yeah, yes, thank you. So today we're talking about the Trinity. Well, mm. this whole series talking about the Trinity, but specifically today we're talking about God the Father. So of yep. course, recap on the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But today we're talking about God the Father and his promises to us as our provider and the light of our life. Super Absolutely. exciting stuff. Yeah. I love God the Father. He's kind of awesome. Kind of peak. Yeah, so that's great. right. <laughs> so excited. So to jump right into everything, what do you think of when you think of God the Father? Well, when we think about the, the Trinity, God the Father is our provider, our protector, the Son is our Savior, and the Holy Spirit is our companion. So when I think of God the Father, I think of the, the God who created us, who knew us, provides for us, and has a plan for our life. Right. And I think you had you mentioned the other pieces of the Trinity, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. at least in my experience, sometimes God the Father can be passed through, you know? Yeah. The it's Father, all about Jesus. The Son yeah. and the Holy Spirit, right? So today, it's a huge look, a deeper look on God the Father as That's our right. Father, our Heavenly Father. Yes. So to jump into the next question... Tell us about a time where you felt like you were unsure about God the Father's plan for your life. Well, I've I've had all sorts of seasons in my life where I felt unsure about the Father's plan. I'm a natural worrier. Mm -hmm. I, I get too. all sorts of anxious about a, all sorts of things. So sometimes when I um, get worried about that, I, I get so unsure about the Father's plan, especially when I was going through my college experience. Um, I kind of bounced around from all sorts of different colleges. I wasn't feeling like I was fitting in or it wasn't, I, I felt like I was abandoned. I didn't feel like I was in the right place. I felt like I was somehow drifted from God's plan or I did something that I wasn't supposed to be doing. And it's only now that I look back and realize that all of the things that I went through um, were such a defined path for me to get to where I am today. And I'm just so grateful. Right. It's kind of like you had a plan for us. I know. No, who would have thought, right? Who would have thunk it? Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of, you talked about worry, and that was one of the first things you had said. When yes. You, were, you know, so openly sharing with us. So there's a scri scripture verse that talks about worrying and mm -hmm. how God tells us, do not worry from Matthew. That's right. So there's a scripture verse that goes along with that, and it is Matthew. And it says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive. For all of these things and indeed your heavenly father knows that you need these things but strive first for the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well matthew 6 31 through 33 yes so the first words here do not worry yes right it's kind of in our face there and he has this plan for us he knows what we need which is so hard because yes. we have so many seasons i have so many seasons where i feel as though like God does not know what I need. I'm like, yeah. God, you know I need this, man. So this Bible verse, what are your thoughts on it? Saying, therefore, do not worry as a natural warrior, like you had shared. As a natural warrior. So this this is my favorite um, passage in the book of Matthew because it's, it's so applicable that we are, we are not, when we worry, we are carrying burdens that we are not meant to carry. We are not to worry about what exactly is going to play out with our life. We're not it, even later in this verse, it says you're not even supposed to worry about tomorrow. Right. You're not even supposed to worry about what you will eat, right? These are these are burdens that God has never designed us to carry. So when we carry these burdens, everything starts to fall out of balance. And this is such a transformative verse. Right. Um, so I, I really have a lot of appreciation for Matthew 6. So you just looked into the future for a second because this verse does continue with what you had just shared there. Mm -hmm. And so it does continue, and it says coming up soon <laughs> it says if your child asks for bread will you give a stone or if the child asks for a fish will you give it a snake mm. if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him so he's saying two things here so the other scripture verse do not worry and really right here it's saying ask him 
Yeah. Ask him for the things you need, but more ask him with the Lord, put what you need in my life. Yes. Put what you need, what I need in my life for me. I guess that's yeah. kind of more letting him take the reins. So what about this piece? You had just touched on it for a moment, but is there anything here that sticks out to you? Yeah, this is where the personification of the role of the father really comes into play because it's so relatable. Sometimes, you know, we think about uh, our parents or uh, people who want to provide or just the, the role of a father in general. You want to bless your children. You want to right. provide good things for them. And it, it's, I love how it says if you then – you're we have a sinful nature, right? Obviously, evil might not be relatable to a lot of people, right. but we have a sinful nature, and even we want to bless our children. Our father, he wants to bless us. He wants to provide the things in our lives. Sometimes we can't see what we really need. Exactly. Sometimes we struggle. But our Father, He wants to bless us. He wants to give good things to us, and He will to those who ask Him. Right, and we had mentioned it earlier too, but He promised us. He promised us life. He then, I guess kind of peering into next week's series, sent down His only Son for us. Absolutely. And He had this plan in mind for us. He is our provider. He made His promises, and He had this plan for us. So I agree with you. There are things that it's so hard to comprehend sometimes. He has a plan for us, right? Yeah. You think, oh gosh, you know, He does have a plan, but... Kind of looking at all of that, was there a time where you felt comforted knowing that he had a plan and that you would receive his plan? Absolutely. The, the more and more uh, that I leaned into God as I got older and the more that I realized that, again, these are burdens that I'm not meant to carry. I'm not supposed to pl like plan out every single detail of right. my life. I'm not supposed to worry about tomorrow or what's going to happen with my job or my career. That is, that is not a burden that I am to carry, that this is all in God's hands. So I think when, when, I am, when I feel most comforted is when I understand that if it's the Lord's will, it will happen. Sometimes I, I get into this place where it's like, oh, if, this doesn't, if I don't get this job or if, if this doesn't happen to me or something, you know, everything's going to fall apart. Right. But then I, I remember in those moments, God has a plan for my life. So if it doesn't happen, or if it does happen, it's the Lord's will. He wants to He wants to give us good things. He wants us to live in the most blessed way possible. So if it doesn't happen, I'm, I'm comforted by the fact maybe it wasn't in the Lord's will. Maybe I think that I want it, but it wouldn't actually have been best for me in the long run. Maybe there was something I couldn't see. So I'm, I'm so comforted by the fact that the Lord will bless us with good things, and good things will come to us when we just seek God first. Right. I, I completely agree. And as somebody, you know, who's very type A, it's so hard. It's like, God, you know, I wanted this, you know, this is what I wanted. <laughs> but of course, and, and somebody also shared with me too. It's like, there's beauty in the things that don't work out because it works out for in, in God's plan more than it does your own because God's yeah. plan is better. Absolutely. I mean, I hate to say it all the time, but pat on the back there, God's plan is better. So looking at that and looking at knowing that his plan is better, was there ever a time where you felt like you could do it all on your own and then you look back now and see that your own plan was not really the plan that God wanted. And you can kind of see now that what, what happened was more God's plan was beautiful and worked for your life better. Absolutely. Um, you know, sometimes I talk about this, I touch on this as to like why worry is specifically a sin. We, we know it's bad. We know it doesn't really help us, but why is it a sin? It's kind of cause, because we, when we worry, we're kind of telling God that he's not God. Like, I'm not sure you're in control here, God. I might have to take over. I'm getting right. a little bit worried about this. So I get in very many situations um, where I am always just trying to, to look for the Father's plan and look for uh, what he has in store for me. So I know that in my own life, uh, when I when I look when I look towards the Father's plan, things work out so much better for me. Right. Absolutely. So I've I've had so many situations where I'm trying to do it all on my own. I'm saying, God, I I I think I need to be in charge of how I handle my relationships or handle my career, handle these things, and it all kind of implodes on me because again, these are not burdens that we're meant to carry. So when you just relax and give it all to God, He will come through for you in the end. All right, and I will say, easier said than done. Yes. <laughs> but again, it's it's the striving to give it up to God. It's the striving and the knowing that his plan yes. is the best plan. Absolutely. Is, it's not easy. So looking at all of that, to recap everything, God is our father. Yes. You know, and, you know, a father is nurturing and loving and is a provider and is a protector and has a plan for you. All of the fathers do in yeah. your life. But he's our heavenly father, and there's just so something so great about knowing that. So knowing that you, we use that term father as in like that loving, 
authoritative way almost. How do you feel, and this can be a question as we go to wrap up that we can all you know, reflect on, how do you feel knowing that he is your father? Not only just God, not only just your you know, provider, but you know, using that term, father. How do you feel about that? This is something that I think is not talked about enough in a church. You know, the idea that we are children of God or that I'm a child of God, it's become a little bit of a cliche nowadays, right? right? But when we think about the relationship between our parents and us, or like a parent and a child in general, this starts to bring out so much light to, to our situations. Again, if God says no, he, he might be trying to protect us. He might be trying to show us something that we're unable to see. I always use this analogy of a dog. Sometimes you have to give your dog a shot. And the, the, from the dog's perspective, he's just getting, you know, poked with this needle. He doesn't right. see, right? And you can't explain to this dog, right? The, the, your, your, your father's thoughts, our heavenly father's thoughts are just so much greater than ours. And he understands us and he knows us. He created us. Right. So he, he understands what we need better than we understand it ourselves. Right. So when we just put all of our trust in him, that's when we have the best life, the most fulfilling life. Right. And he wants us to run to him. He wants yes. us to talk to him. Because, again, sometimes he can be overshadowed by Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. But God the Father loves us. And it's talked about so often, more than anything else in the Bible, of course, we talk about Jesus. But you're right. God the Father loves us. He is our Father. Yes. And Thank you for coming on our Absolutely. Podcast today. So th thanks so much for having Thank me. Thank you for coming on again. I yeah. appreciate it every time you're here. And we hope that our conversation feels your conversation in small group. And we can't wait to see you guys back here next week to talk about Jesus the Son. Have a great week, everybody. Mm -hmm.